I'm here to tell you just one or two things. If any further bloodshed has to be avoided in this country, everybody might have as well realize that the ranks have borne the blood of the suffering of this country for too long. They want bloodshed. They want bloodshed. So for heaven's sake, do not who the tag came and Rawlings was announcing that some people want bloodshed. They want bloodshed and people were dying on the streets on Monday, June 4th, 1979. First Tosa you must have been a lieutenant by then. Go back to your notes as a platoon commander. Is that what you are asking for or because of your own parochial political interest you are making such irresponsible statements on radio about coup d'etat in Ghana? Are you making this irresponsible statement because of your own parochial interest? Or you've forgotten that when you were platoon commander and these things were happening, many officers didn't like it. Go back to Rawlings on June 4, 1979. This Rawlings again. Have a look. I'm here to tell you just one or two things. If any further bloodshed has to be avoided in this country, Everybody might have as well realize that the ranks have borne the blood of the suffering of this country for too long. They want bloodshed. They want bloodshed. So for heaven's sake, do not beg in their way. Did I also hear Festus Abwaji talk about the election of the Speaker in Parliament as being, as being a reason why Ghana is unstable and that there should be a coup d'etat. What was the problem with the election of the Speaker in Parliament? The Constitution was obeyed. There's a clear constitutional clause. People will be nominated for the Speakership of Parliament. MPs will vote as the Electoral College for the rest of the country. MPs cast their vote. They counted their ballot. Alban Bagbin had won it. He was sworn in as Speaker. What is the problem with this? What's Abouadji saying about that? What is his concern? Is it that the soldiers tried to go into parliament because they thought there was a problem and they went in and then these people shouted that the soldiers should leave them alone? What is the problem with the video you are looking at? Does that happen in Burkina Faso and Mali? What is the problem with the video? Now, we as journalists were there till morning. It was eventful. It's historical. This is the first time that in Ghana, and it happens in America all the time, and we commend American democracy. Why can't we commend Ghanaian democracy when the Speaker of Parliament is elected by the minority? Why can't we commend God? Why is it not a commendation for Ghanaian democracy and it is a, a reaction or a reflection of instability towards coup d'etat? How is Festus Abwaji reading these things? He cited Dr. Imano Kusienin. Kusienin, please educate him better. I beg you, please. Educate Festus Abwaji better. Let him understand the political science of the situation. Maybe he doesn't get it. He's just looking at it from one angle. What is wrong? For me, as a political science student, I saw the election of speaker as a feather in the cap of Ghana's democracy. It doesn't happen in Africa. It never happened in Africa before. We always look at it happening in America. The Democrats have the House. The Republicans have the White House. The Republicans have the House. The Democrats have the White House. We celebrate America for that. It happens in Ghana and it must look like it is some untoward event towards democracy, democracy is able to throw up all of these options. That is why it is unpredictable in terms of who is going to win. When democracy throws up an election, it's unpredictable. We don't know who is going to win. Anyone can win. Anyone who participates can win. Yes, we can do the analysis and say that CPP has a very small chance of winning and that NDPC has a very small chance of winning. NDC could win. MPP could win. Even pastors prophesied on day because of the lack of predictability of who is going to win. What is wrong with Alban Bagbin being elected as speaker from the minority side? Festus Abouadji cited it about the election 2020. Are we confident about the election? What was wrong with the election that went to the Supreme Court? What was wrong with the election? Is it just because somebody says that I was cheated? Is that why an election is wrong? Is that why we are thinking coup d'etat? I just don't understand what Festus Abouadji is saying. Now, let me, let me show you one more thing. Uh, Festus Abouadji talks about the system in Ghana. Last Tuesday, uh, please put behind me the judiciary uh, one, the judiciary, Supreme Court last Tuesday. Last Tuesday, uh, just as I was about to render this auditorial, our reporters came to me and said that something has happened at the Supreme Court. Let me give you the background and go to what happened at the Supreme Court on Tuesday. And you will see that Festus Abwaj's point is parochial. It is baseless. He has no facts to back it. 
that comparison of Ghana and Burkina Faso, that, that there's, there's corruption in Ghana before the Burkina Faso coup came. There's corruption in Ghana before the Mali coup came. Listen to Abuaji's words, that the factors that facilitated the coup in those countries or engendered the coup in those countries are present here. So we should be concerned. Why? President is traveling. First lady. Let's, let's go to the screen and see. Okay, so these are the facts of the case. In July 2020, the High Court of Ghana, Cape Coast, held that the said MP, which is the MP for Asin North, must not hold himself out as such and consequently annulled the parliamentary elections for the Asin North constituency. The embattled MP then appear, appealed to the Court of Appeal, which is yet to decide on the matter. Mr. Quayson, despite the judgment of the High Court, is still holding himself out as an MP. Now, this is a story you know about, and you know that this story is very important because of the uh, numbers, the closeness of the numbers in parliament. NPP have 138, NDC have 137. So, on the night of the election of the speaker, you remember Alexander Fenyo Markin, to whom much credit has not been given, one of the best hardworking MPs of our time. Young man, wrestles the seat in Winneba. MPP were never winning the seat in Winneba. In fact, MPP had never won it before. Alexander Fenyo, it was an NDC stronghold. So, it was a, it was a, it was a blue state. Afenyo Markin comes and turns it into a red state and is holding it so strong. Very clever lawyer. Afenyo Markin is the one who raised the point on the floor of the house on the night to the clerk that a sin not MP is here. He ought not to be here. Be That's how come the soldiers came in. That's how come all the brouhaha occurred. Nonetheless, the Asin North MP, Mr. Kwesin, the Honorable Kwesin, was allowed to vote. After that, the court processes began. He went gone to the High Court, now the Court of Appeal. What we must understand is that in terms of parliamentary election petition, the final stage is the Court of Appeal. I have to make that point because in terms of presidential election petition, the only forum is the Supreme Court. So you have two stages in a presidential election petition. The, first, uh, the Supreme Court as a first instance and then Supreme Court on the review. In the case of a parliamentary election, you have two stages. The High Court in the first instance and the Court of Appeal as an appeal. So when you go to the Court of Appeal and you lose in a parliamentary election petition, that's the end of the story. In the presidential election petition, the story ends if you lose a Supreme Court review. So we need to know that at the back of our minds. So let's get back to the story. Okay, it continues. The government subsequently went to the Supreme Court to seek an interpretation of Article 9421A in, in effect to seek an interpretation of the word allegiance and to seek an order compelling Mr. Quaysen to obey the orders of the High Court. I think before then, the Court of Appeal had ruled. Okay, the government argued that since Mr. Quaysen has made it hard for him to be served with the process, he should be served as an ordinary person. Okay, uh, let, me, let me give you more of the facts and the details. So, Mr. Quaysen lost at the High Court. He also lost at the Court of Appeal. And so right now, uh, last week, Tuesday, the MPP went to court, Supreme Court, to say that, dear Supreme Court, Mr. Quaysen has ended the journey of defending himself uh, that he is legitimately a member of parliament. That journey has ended because he has lost at the high court and he has lost at the court of appeal. Asking the Supreme Court, therefore, the, the, the MPP lawyers, to uh, injunct Mr. Quaysen from attending parliament and to write to the Electoral Commission to create a by-election. If Mr. Quaysen is not in parliament, the NDC will be 137. The Supreme Court was well aware of the political nuances of this case, the political underpinnings of this case. The Attorney General was there. But this is a democracy. This is Ghana. Let's go back and see the Supreme Court judges who took that decision. Uh, I hope it's here. Let's put it behind me very quickly. Okay, now they have it. Okay, the Supreme Court judges who took that decision are as follows. Justice Jones Doche, appointed by President Kufo so long ago. Justice Nene Amagache, appointed by Nana Dodanko Akufado. Is Festus Abuaji listening? Listen, this is Ghana. This is not America. And this is not your Burkina Faso and Mali. This is Ghana where the Supreme Court is hearing a case and majority of the members of the bench are appointed by the president. They rule against the attorney general. Let's listen to it. This is just Tuesday. First of all, Sabuaji should pay more attention to the good things happening in Ghana than focusing on something that doesn't exist to say that Ghana is ready for coup d'etat. He should be invited by the CID to write because he has evinced an intention for it. He should issue a statement and say that he does not believe in coup d'etat. Then Amegacha, appointed by Akufuado. Move on. Justice get to talk on who appointed by Akufuado. Distinguished Yoni Emmanuel Kulende, appointed by Akufuado. Uh, Justice Agnes Messi Ablan Doji, appointed by Akufuado, I believe. Uh, Justice Mar Mariama Owusu is much earlier, I think. Um, Justice Professor Henrietta Mensa Bunsu, appointed by Akufuado. So the panel of judges, majority of them appointed by Akufuado, they were well aware that if I were Akufuado, I will welcome a Supreme Court decision that says that 
Mr. Honorable Kwesin should not be allowed to participate in the duties of the House because he has lost the ultimate appeal for an, a parliamentary election petition, which is at the Court of Appeal. That's the end of the matter. He's lost it. The Supreme Court are aware that Mr. Kwesin had been in court. He knows that he's lost it. What did the Supreme Court say? The Supreme Court told the Attorney General that we cannot give you the order because you have not served Honorable Kwesin. You have to serve him. Why haven't you served him? And then they said, we went to Parliament to serve him through the clerk. The clerk refused to collect the service. He said we should serve him through the speaker. We went there. The speaker had traveled. They said, well, Supreme Court said, well, you have to serve him. That's the procedure. The Supreme Court was making obeisance to the legal procedure because this is a democracy. Abuaji should understand that. Like Colonel Festus Abuaji understand it. Ghana is a 30-year-old democracy. Yes, we need amendments to the Constitution. We need a better livelihood for our people. We need politicians who are not fighting in Parliament. We need everything more decent. But we are not Burkina Faso and Mali. Don't come and sit on public radio and tell us that we are getting to coup because we are Burkina Faso. If you do that, then you have evinced an interest in the coup. You yourself, you need to answer questions. You yourself, Colonel Abwaji, you need to answer questions because by saying the things you said, you have evinced an interest in that coup d'etat you are looking for. It's never going to happen. That's your coup d'etat. It won't happen. What are you talking about? How can such an important person, a whole military colonel, come and sit on radio and talk like that when the host is prompting you that can't you see that Ghana is a democracy and then you are still going on, no, no, no. Ghana is not. Please, let's play that video again. So the court ended by telling the attorney general that no, we can't, we can't give the order on Kwesin. Kwesin is still in parliament. He was in parliament today. The attorney general now has to go and find a way to serve Kwesin. When did the court adjourn the matter to? They adjourned the senior day. That means they've adjourned it indefinitely. That's what the Supreme Court did. They didn't tell the attorney general that, oh, Mr. Attorney General, you're our friend. So, okay, go and serve him and come back on Friday. They hit the thing on the table and said, court is adjourned senior day. Some people say sine die, but it's a Latin, so it's sine die. That's what the court agenda unto, sine die. That's a democracy. It's only in Ghana that you find these things. You find it in America as well, but this is Ghana. Festus Abuaji must learn to appreciate what is happening. Get out of his parochial interest and stop talking like that. Listen to Festus Abuaji again. Play the one in which Samson is asking him questions. Play that one. In the midst of all of this and all the trouble that happens in Parliament, can't we say that a country like Ghana is safe from all of these, you know, military upheavals? We can't say that, Sam. So Why not? I'm Why sorry. not? Because our democratic system is, is entrenched, is it not? It is not? It is not entrenched. In fact, I would argue that it is a veneer, you know. And as Professor Kwesiani suggested, you see, if you single out the causative factors, you may say that Ghana may not experience some of these upheavals. We may wake up tomorrow and Ouagadougou would have fallen to the jihadists. Mm. The jihadists will be closer to our borders. Even the current military coup could evolve into some kind of civil war mm. where another part of the military rises against the establishment. And therefore, we need to be concerned beyond what is going on in, uh, in, in, in Mali. Okay. But the other point is that, mm. you see, when we say that we are prosperous, our economy is doing well, our democracy is entrenched, it is not as simple as that. But in military studies, we are taught to pay attention to detail. Now, if people in this country cannot be paid, and you've just mentioned, uh, the case of the lawyers, sorry, the lecturers. Mm -hmm. If there is unemployment, as huge as Professor Christianian has suggested, the youth bulge and the youth unemployment, why on earth do we have a political class that shuttles around the world in chartered uh, planes? For instance, why do we even want to begin to talk about buying a new presidential plane? Why do we, for instance, want to start talking about paying first ladies beyond the 49,000 or so that is paid to the president when many millions of Ghanaians... You, you heard Festo Sabuaji, first ladies, death story. A former military colonel knows that the Air Force makes the decision of the president. If we don't like it, parliament can change it. Parliament can tell the president that you can't travel in this way. 
Professor Sabwaji has evinced his own intentions. Now, I interviewed Professor Adai Mensah many years ago. Professor Adai Mensah is a politician. He was a former vice chancellor of the University of Ghana, chemistry professor. He's a politician. He was the general secretary of the, the, the winsome and formidable People's National Party that won the uh, 1979 election after two rounds of voting to make Dr. Liman president. So Professor Adai Mensah belongs to the Liman party. He was his general secretary. Whatever good thing he says about Liman's party, you may want to take it with a pinch of salt. Because of who he is, I believe him. But he didn't finish there. Professor Adai Mensah also spoke about his opponent, about Prime Minister Buzia in the context of coup d'etat. That's sensible, that's wisdom. That's from the vice chancellor. That's how we build a nation. Listen to Professor Adai Mensah's advice. Those two people, if either of them had stayed in power without any military intervention, this country wouldn't be where it is at the moment. I will give that credit to both Buzia and Liman. If you look at the, uh, the things that they put in place to lead this country economically, socially, uh, uh, politically, everything, if things had been allowed to go, it's well. Of course, if, in the case of Buzia, I wish he would eventually have allowed the CPP also to contest openly and on equal terms in subsequent elections uh, so that he wouldn't be accused of having been handed, over, uh, handed power on a silver platter, you know, so that there would be real competition. Uh, in the case of Liman, everybody had a, uh, you know, the, uh, an equal chance to contest. But when you take the things that they sought out to do for this country, this country wouldn't be where it is at the moment. That was Professor Ivan Adai Mensah, the former Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana. That's the kind of advice he gave. It's past 11, so I'm going to uh, 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 call it, call it, bring the curtain down on the show. But that's something we need to go to bed thinking about. It will be on social media tomorrow. You can look at it. But that's something we need to go to bed thinking about. We shouldn't have our security experts, political scientists, go on radio and talk the way that Colonel Festo Sabuaji spoke. It's very, very bad. And it's even clutching a straw when you're using stories that are dead to make the point that there's a problem in Ghana. On this note, I leave it here. Thanks for watching this. Good evening, Ghana. And good night. We now have freedom.